Crash and burn. Hey everyone, so tonight, or today rather, I wanted to discuss Taylor Swift's Folklore. This is the second of her two most recent releases. This record, in my opinion, was sort of a surprise. I've been following everything Taylor had been up to prior to this, and all of a sudden we got word that Folklore would be released, and it was supposed to be an entirely new direction that nobody was going to see coming. And that was good to hear as far as I was concerned because I felt really concerned after Lover because I felt like Lover was a step back from the progression that she had made with Red and then through Reputation and then 89. Lover felt like she was sort of playing it safe to the younger part of her fan base and she was sort of neglecting the older aspects of her fan base because Lover, it just felt very juvenile. And although I like aspects of Lover, I really like the artwork, for example, and it's nice to have a friend, but uh, those two things, that one song and the artwork isn't really enough for me to like say that I love the album, of course. So with a new direction being announced for Folklore, I didn't know what that meant, of course, and I had no idea that the record was gonna be this mature, it was gonna have this much scope, it was going to be so secure sounding, she was going to sound or that she was going to sound so overly confident. Like, this is a record somebody makes after being around for, you know, 25 years, give or take. And she made it a few records after having transitioned from country into the world of more, like, mainstream pop. She released this record that had so much character and so much emotional depth and so much range. And I absolutely loved the artwork, too. It's very black metal. I love how black metal that cover is, even though I'm willing to bet that that was not Taylor's intention when she decided to do come up with the artwork for Folklore with whomever it was she collaborated with. But the cover art for Folklore could not be more like Scandinavian black metal. It's incredible. It's such a odd mixture of uh, like, like I said, the black metal feel with the very developed folk sound that would fit right in with anything that like Harry Chapin or Cat Stevens had done. Um, even though I will say this is still tinged with that Taylor Swift pop perfection sound that she's really, really well known for. Um, but this is a really awesome direction for her. Folklore, it has, I don't know, there's a, a shine to it. There's something very clean sounding about these folk songs on here. And yet with tracks like uh, The Last Great American Dynasty, which is about Rebecca Harkness, which I thought was absolutely amazing. And I even loved how she changed the actual story about Harkness kidnapping her neighbor's cat in the song Taylor switches it out for the neighbor's dog, which is technically not true, but Taylor is a cat person. So naturally she wouldn't want anybody fucking with a kitty. And I get that, even though I hate cats. And with tracks like Invisible String, This Is Me Trying, Seven, I mean, these songs are fun, they're catchy, but they, they also have a lot to say, which is surprising considering, like I said, how quickly she sort of, it felt like she put these songs together and it's like she'd been working on them her entire life. But we know that isn't the case because each Taylor Swift record is like an entire production in and of itself and she's focused and committed to that one project at a time. So folklore, all the music on there isn't completely new, but the songs are so big and they're so much fun. And I love how clean they sound. I love how there's something almost haunting to each of the songs on here, but not haunting in sort of like a negative way, but more haunting if it can be positive, I suppose. Like there's something heavenly going on with this record and I just love it. And I love that, I love how well bookended it is. And I love too how this would not be the last that we would hear from Taylor Swift in this direction because she would follow it up with Evermore, which is just more of the same, which is never gonna be a bad thing. I hope she sticks with this sound forever. This record was incredible. I listen to it all the time. This next to Reputation and, well, Evermore technically is my favorite out of the folklore era, but this Evermore and Reputation are like Taylor Swift's best records, even though I will argue still 1989 was pretty much perfect as well. So I think I'm gonna leave it there. 
So thank you so much for hanging out with me while I discussed Taylor Swift's folklore. If you like this review, don't forget to do something nice for somebody, and I will talk to you guys soon. Have a good night. I just wanted to say thank you for making it through the entire video. I really appreciate it. And I'm going to remind everyone one more time, even though I've probably already done this in the video that you just watched, to please click the like button as well as the subscribe button because it helps this channel grow. And thank you for hitting like and subscribe. And we will see you guys really soon.